Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this nice looking Android box. It is called S922X. I want to let you know that this box is phenomenal. You can see that how it's designed, how powerful the CPU is. Also comes with 4 GB of RAM with 64 GB internal storage and a gigabit LAN. I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family and make sure you click the notification icon and select all in order for you to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click the click the like button. It really motivates us and makes us to make these type of videos a little bit faster with more detail every time. All right, so you can see that the box is really nicely designed. And once we cut the bottom, and we slowly take the top out, and here are all the components that are part of this. It comes with this quick install guide. It is very nicely done. You can see all day information has been really nicely well printed on a, a good paper and here is the installation guide starting which we will show in this video also it says to connect to internet also have a screen settings and remote control which we will cover in a few seconds here is the power connector it is done really nicely you can see the part that is connecting to the box it's a little bit bigger than the usual Wire is nicely done too, and it is about a meter long. But we'll go into the actual power brick. It is created for Canada and United States. And you can see that it does indicate that this is 5 volt, 2 amps. It also comes with this HDMI cable. Here is the remote. It's very small. Inside of a plastic, when you take it out, you can see that this is an IR remote. There's the little sensor. And then in the back, you have to slide it down open in order to put two AAA batteries, which is not part of it. It is made out of plastic and silicon. And you can see in the front part of it that you have the power, mute, four-way navigation key with the OK in the middle. You also have the static mouse, home button, return key. You have the volume down, volume up, and the menu button right in the middle. And no other markings in the bottom. Now here is the big part. The actual box itself it's sitting inside of a nice looking plastic I like this plastic it's a little bit thicker than the other ones and once you take it out this is how the box looks all right from the front you have a huge LCD screen so it will tell you a time you have the IR sensor and then you have the actual physical button in the front all right this one you can see this is the right side of it you will see that there is a TF card reader which can read up to 128 gigabyte. Then you have one USB 2.0, one USB 3.0, and there is a little reset hole just in case if you want to reset the box. Now going to the back part of it, starting with the antenna, then you have the DC power, which is 5 volt to amp. You have HDMI 2.0. You have an optical audio so you can connect it to older type of stereo system. Then you have the LAN connection. And then you also have the AV port if you want to connect it to older type of TVs. Then you have the second antenna. Now going on the left side, there's nothing. I really like that little curve that they have created for this box. It looks beautiful on this unit itself. So here's the bottom. You have four little legs you can stand up. There is a little sticker that will give you a lot of information out, such as model number, DC input, which is 502 amp, also, it says the RAM and the internal storage and where this is made. All right, enough said about the box itself. Let's get this connected. So first thing first, make sure you connect your HDMI wire. And then go ahead and connect the power. Now, this is an Android box. We always recommend for you not to use this static mouse and grab a air mouse remote and go ahead, connect the dongle in the back. Once it starts booting up, it will tell you that it is booting. So on the start, you will just get the generic boot up 
screen which is says mbox and once it goes in this is the main screen this is their metro launcher so first thing first you can see that the setup is really nicely done they have some baby blue in the background and also you have the icons or looks like it is just put side by side which is really cool so if you have to go to static mouse in this case the actual remote that came with it you can easily select your icons doesn't matter if you want to go into Netflix, YouTube, or Google Play Store. You will see some of the icons on the top, which is Wi-Fi, Ethernet, Bluetooth, USB, and also SD card. Anything that you're going to be connected to, like I am connected to LAN, it will be changing to green sign. Beside that, you have date and time. Here's a date at the time. And also, you have some more little folders. So you can files, music. So you can click on it, and you can add the actual app. And also you can go to settings and you also have browser and also video player. These are basically this one is a folder and this one will take you to regular browser. And then you have all the apps. So most of these apps that you see we installed. So let's go through down. These are mostly shortcuts and how you can add is you have a little plus sign, which we always enjoy having it. And then you can select an app, it puts a little check mark when you get out, it adds it in the bottom. I really like that little animation. Or you can get rid of it by just going to it, go back onto the little check mark, click on it, and it disappears. Beautiful. All right, enough said about this part. Let's go to the next section, which will be some benchmarking. So the first thing we're going to go to to give us some more details is going to be AIDA64. As soon as it comes up, you can see that it is under system, and the manufacturer shows AM Logic model A is S922X. Brand is AM Logic, so the RAM is 4 gigabyte. How much is used right now? And the internal storage right now shows as 54.8 because the rest is taken care of by the actual OS. Going down is the Bluetooth. It is 4.2, so it shows 4 plus. Now going under CPU itself, you can see that it is hexacore or six cores into this. So two of them running on 1800 and the other four cores are running on 1704 megahertz and you can see the ones that are sleeping and the ones that are running you can see how low they are running so that means as it's very good and it's not going to heat up now going under utilization is right there and also the scale governor is interactive we always want this so this way it will keep the temperature pretty good going under display itself right now it is set up on 1080p so that's their native resolution and then going down, you have the GPU, which is Molly G52, which is a dual core processor. And then you can see that the refresh rate is 60 hertz, which is perfect. And also OpenGL is 3.2, which is very, very good for gaming. So going under Android itself, you can see it is Android 9 Pi. And also rooted device, it says yes. We have a little app. We will run that so we can check this more. But going under Kodak's. This is where you're going to be able to find all of your codecs that you're looking for. Something like H.263 and also RM10, MPEG-4 and going down under VP9 is something new that everybody wants to have in order for you to get your 10-bit 4K running on it properly. So VP8 is there and also VP9 is there. These are done by Google and also there is another version of Google there too which is MPEG-4 h263 so these are very mandatory for you to have and then the decoders are all there too and i've said about this let's get at it the next thing we want to go to is going to be antutu benchmark now this is showing everything sideways now i will flip this properly so you can see it but the number that i got out of this is 85224 which is a beautiful number for this hexacore s922h chipset with four gigabyte of ram now the next thing we are going to launch is going to be Geekbench 5 and you can see for single core we received 104 and for multi core is 345 which is good but I'm sure that the dev team that is working behind this can see this and they can make this way better. The next thing we want to go through is going to be the root checker. Now this is the first time we're going to click on it and you can see that it says we are full root access which is perfect. Now, the next thing we want to go through is going to be YouTube. All right, so this is a 4K video that we are playing. But once you go to the quality, you can see that it is pulling down 2160p, which is 4K. And if you want to know if this is running on 30 hertz or 60 hertz, and then over here will tell you 
that this is running 2160 and 30 hertz. This is how you know how good the picture quality will be on download to watch your 4K content. So here you go. This is our first test. So this file is 4K and 10 bit. You can see that it's playing it flawlessly. Now I just turned off the sound and there's the sound. So there is no stop when you're playing this. You can hear it that it brings the picture properly to and the sound at the same time. So here you go. This is another video of 4K that we filmed ourselves in Niagara Falls a few years ago. I really missed the place. But here you go. We're in pandemic. I hope that this place really opens up to us again the same way as we were in that time. <laughs> there you go this just brings back memories this is awesome so here you go this is beautiful you can see it that it plays it flawlessly and awesome so let's get out of this and an export is one of our old old videos of 1080p just gonna bring down the volume a little bit and here you go this plays it properly there's no stop to it you can see all the pixels are properly set up on it and there's no stop to it that we can say oh my god here's a little frame drop it wears it plays it accurately for us the next thing we want to go through and the last thing I want to mention is going to be the speed test. Now we always leave this at the end because there are little parts that we can take care and we can talk about when it comes to these type of things. So we will go to result which we already done. So the first thing that we did was our 5G network, no more 2.4. We have a mesh network so if this box itself is going to fall on 2.4 you will see a really low numbers. This is 5G and remember that when you're getting your internet from your ISPs, they always say up to a gigabit. So we have up to a gigabit and it's not always the same. And when it comes to your connection on Wi-Fi, depends how many connections you have. Today we have roughly about 20 things connected. We're downloading, uploading and also we're making videos and there's some other people that are doing some homeworks and everything and that's why you see the numbers are a little bit lower. So let's go through it. So for the first time that we have done tests, our download rate was really low. It was about 40 and start going up to 80 and then it climbed up all the way to 135 for our download rate. And then once we start uploading, you can see that it just jumped from 0 to 30 and it stayed there and it just went up and down a little bit. So between 31 to 30 and then it start going to almost 32 megabit which is we're exceeding on 32 megabit when we did it one more time you can see that it jumped directly from 20s to 40s to 80s it went up a little bit over here to 135 and then it went down to 132 and it stayed there now when we did the upload our ping was about 20 which was really cool but you can see that it didn't really go that much up for our upload rate. So it's about 31.6, which is again really good. Once we hook it up to our LAN, here's the best part. It start picking up and went up to almost 850. And then it start arcing a little bit. And you can see that state on roughly about 644. And once we did our upload, you can see that because this is LAN connection, it stayed up all the way to 32.6, so it's over. And once we did it one more time, we went down a little bit, so it started going up from here to 100, and then almost to a 5, 6, and then 700, and then start going down back to 621. That's where it stayed. And our upload rate was roughly about 32.3, so it kind of went down, but not that much. Again, it's still exceeding. That's really good. Our ping was about 22. For the last time, it was 24, and you can see the number was a little bit bigger. So it depends exactly how you connect it and who you connect it to. So these parts really matter on how you're going to be connected. And you can see that these are almost the same servers that we connected. This one was to Rogers Wireless. And this one was to Bell Canada, which is landline. So that means is, that's why we got a lot better numbers. Our connection is done by Rogers itself. So this is a little bit different. Remember, with all the pandemic and everything going around, your internet levels are never going to be exactly what they're going to give it to you. It's always a little bit lower because this internet has been shared between you and your neighbors, whoever's going to 
be connecting to. So this is a little insight that we wanted to give out so that way you will learn a little more. If you have questions, don't worry. Drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. I want to mention one more thing that when we were playing video game with this box itself, it's flawless. It's beautiful. It's really smooth and it really worth playing a lot of games on this. I have to mention that with the Bluetooth 4.2, it doesn't matter where you're going to be connected. Doesn't matter if it's a computer keyboard. Yes, you can do that. Mouse, of course you can use it. And also if you have gaming pads, doesn't matter if it's Xbox or even if it is a PlayStation, which is Bluetooth perfectly connectable, you can use it. Or even the ones from Walmart that looks like Xbox controllers, you can buy it. The main one that I really like and is very, very convenient in the United States and Canada is from Metricom. You can buy it. It's roughly about $18 to $25. And that's my main one that I'm playing this game with. It's beautiful. In the conclusion, I want to mention that this box is very reasonable on price. It is done by banggood.com. Don't worry. Links are all going to be available. We can order it from. If you do have a question, don't worry. Bring it in the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP, except that I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the, click the like button, subscribe button on the top, comment in the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, which is xctext.info. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking places and thank you.